It's sure starting to look like the United States is preparing for an unprecedented hypersonic weapons test right in China's backyard. Now, we already know there's a live AGM-183 Arrow affixed to a B-52 at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. And now it's sure starting to look like the U.S. wants to see what that thing can do. Let's talk about the mounting evidence to suggest that Uncle Sam's about to test a hypersonic missile maybe less than 1,500 miles away from Chinese territory. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Before we dive in, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, AllVeteran.com. Now, if you're a veteran like me, you've almost certainly already dealt with the VA, and you know that despite the good intentions of the folks who work there, the system itself can be exceedingly difficult to navigate. In fact, I was medically retired as a sergeant from the Marine Corps because of multiple knee surgeries, but today, my knees aren't covered by the VA, nor do I receive disability payments for them, and it's all because of a paperwork mishap. This sort of thing happens to veterans all the time. And it's where allveteran.com can really help. Allveteran.com has a simple and easy to use process to help you gather all of the medical evidence you need for a potentially successful claim to increase your disability payments with the VA. In fact, to date, more than 48,000 veterans have already been helped by allveteran.com's medical evidence development services, resulting in an average increased disability payment of around $1,205 per month. So if you, like me, are daunted by the VA disability claims process, Go to info.allveteran.com slash sandbox to help make sure you get the benefits that you earned in uniform. Click on the link in the description below to get started. Last week, pictures surfaced online of a live AGM-183 Arrow or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, a hypersonic missile affixed to a B-52H at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. Now, this was indeed a live weapon, as denoted by the yellow bands around the missile's fuselage. And according to the Air Force, the weapon was in Guam for standard hypersonic weapon familiarization training. But that doesn't make a great deal of sense. Why would you transport a live AGM-183 all the way out to Guam for a little bit of familiarization training? Now, that did raise the suspicions of some, but it was just a few days later that authorities began issuing warning notices to aviators and mariners about a cordoned-off portion of the Pacific leading to the Reagan test site, some 1,000 miles east of Guam, that now appears to be the location for an imminent long-range weapons test. And I have to give Joseph Trevithick at the Warzone credit for being the first journalist I've seen reporting on the correlation between these two things. Now, you may recall the AGM-183A Arrow, or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, was a Lockheed Martin-led effort to field an air-launched hypersonic glide vehicle. Now, hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, are one of two classes of modern maneuvers maneuverable hypersonic weapons, alongside hypersonic cruise missiles like the hypersonic attack cruise missile also in development for the U.S. Air Force. Now, to date, both China and Russia do have hypersonic glide vehicles in service, both of which are launched by ground-based ballistic missiles. Russia has the Avangard weapon, which is a hypersonic glide vehicle designed to ferry nuclear payloads to American targets after being carried aloft via the RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile. China, on the other hand, has the DFZF. This hypersonic weapon is an anti-ship missile designed to be carried aloft via the intermediate range DF-17 ballistic missile instead. Now, Arrow diverges from both of these in-service weapons in two important ways. The first is that it's meant to be an air-launched hypersonic glide vehicle deployed by B-52s or perhaps even F-15 EXs a bit further down the road. And the second is that Arrow, like all hypersonic weapons the U.S. has in development, is strictly a conventionally armed weapon, whereas both Russian and Chinese hypersonics are considered nuclear-capable and, as such, are classified as strategic deterrents. These aren't weapons you would use in a standard conflict, but are rather end-of-days systems, whereas Arrow is meant to be leveraged in any sort of conflict from the day it enters service. 
But by now you may be asking yourself, hey, wasn't this weapon canceled last year? And you're partially right. After a series of embarrassing testing failures, the AGM-183 program was axed by the Air Force early last year, with Air Force officials saying very clearly that they were instead going to focus on the hypersonic attack cruise missile, a scramjet-powered hypersonic cruise missile that could be deployed by a wider variety of fighters because it's a much smaller weapon. But you may recall just a few weeks ago when I posted a video explaining that the rumors of Arrow's demise had been greatly exaggerated. According to a report published by the Director of Operational Testing and Evaluation in January of this year, the Air Force is holding off on making a final production decision about Aero until it completes its all-up round testing, which is set to happen this year. According to that report, the Air Force was planning on testing the weapon one more time in 2024, and it now looks like we're staring down the barrel of that very test. Now, as we've discussed on this channel before, Arrow had an extremely aggressive timeline to service, and I've even argued that that was probably why it suffered so many failures in testing. You see, the United States long led the world in hypersonic technologies, with platforms like Boeing's X-51 Wave Rider and NASA's X-43A, both scramjet-powered technology demonstrators that set records of their own. But two decades' worth of asymmetric conflicts in the global war on terror saw Uncle Sam reorient his financial priorities away from these advanced weapons that could deter near peers and toward ongoing combat operations with the systems that are already in service. And Russia and China both took that opportunity to close the technological gap when it comes to these high-speed weapons. Or at least that's the story when it comes to Russia. Of course, we've since learned that their KH-47M2 Kinzel, which was once touted as the world's first modern hypersonic weapon, is actually little more than an air-launched ballistic missile. Now, ballistic missiles and hypersonic glide vehicles actually share a lineage, but there are important distinctions in the way that they operate. Ballistic missiles fly along a high-arcing ballistic flight path from which they derive their name, and that predictable flight path renders them susceptible to intercept, which is why Ukraine was able to intercept Kinzel missiles using the MIM-104 Patriot air defense system. Patriot is very effective at intercepting ballistic missile threats. Hypersonic glide vehicles, on the other hand, are still carried aloft via a conventional rocket booster, just like a ballistic warhead. But they separate at a much lower altitude and then use either control surfaces, chemical thrusters, or a combination of the two to maneuver dramatically as they glide unpowered down toward their target at extreme speeds, sometimes as high as Mach 20 or more. Now, ballistic missiles can often reach their targets faster than hypersonic ones do, because the hypersonic weapons are maneuvering and that scrubs a great deal of speed. But those maneuvers make it incredibly difficult to calculate an intercept point so that you can shoot these missiles down. And that's what makes hypersonic weapons so dangerous. Now, Arrow is no exception to this. In fact, as you look at this clip of the AGM-183 being carried by a B-52H Stratofortress, Arrow looks like a massive weapon, but the truth is, most of what you see here in this white shell is the conventional rocket booster. Inside the nose cone of the weapon you see on screen is a small hypersonic glide vehicle that's deployed by this weapon once it's flying at sufficient altitude and speed. Now, that glide vehicle that separates is ultimately what travels unpowered but maneuvering down toward its target. And while we don't know just how fast Arrow can be, we do know that it's expected to exceed Mach 5, which is generally considered to be the hypersonic barrier. Now, I say generally for good reason. Technically speaking, hypersonic speed is defined as the speed in which your interaction with the air actually affects the chemical makeup of that air itself. But that tends to start happening at around Mach 5, so we use Mach 5 as our general rule of thumb. Now, Russia's other hypersonic weapon, the hypersonic glide vehicle known as Avangard, may well be the real deal for all we know. But thus far, Russia claims the weapon has only ever been tested twice, both of which they say were successful. American intelligence assessments suggest it was actually tested at least one more time, with that third test being a failure, that Russia opted not to disclose. So as far as we know, Russia's avant-garde actually saw 
fewer successful tests before entering service than Aero did before the Air Force initially canceled it. And that may actually be a big part of why Aero's coming back from the dead. You see, of the first seven Aero tests, three were successful and four were considered failures. But at least three of those failures were not actually of the hypersonic glide vehicle itself. Instead, they were failures attributed to things like the whole weapon failing to disconnect from the B-52, or an issue with the wiring bus connecting it to the aircraft. This is why I suspected Arrow's early testing failures were largely due to the rush to get this weapon into service. And the report from the Director of Operational Testing and Evaluation would seem to substantiate that idea. You see, according to them, one big problem the Air Force has run into is a lack of sufficient testing infrastructure over the United States. There just aren't many flight corridors over the US where you can test a weapon with a top speed in excess of Mach 5 and a range of a thousand miles or more. And as a result, all of America's 70 plus different hypersonic weapons efforts, as well as hypersonic aircraft programs, ballistic missile programs, and a whole lot more, are all competing for the very same limited testing facility space. So when an aero test would fail, you couldn't come back and try again the next day. You had to wait for the next opening in the test facility schedule, which might be six months or longer away. And that really inhibits progress in an advanced program like this. So it sure looks like Uncle Sam has decided to stop trying to test Arrow in his own backyard and to start testing it in China's instead. And to be honest, that makes a great deal of sense, not just because there's tons of open space out in the Pacific, but also because China is the real competitor when it comes to advanced hypersonic weapons. China's DFZF hypersonic anti-ship weapon is purpose-built to hold American aircraft carriers at bay at four-digit ranges as a part of China's broader anti-access area denial strategy. China has a massive stockpile of ballistic, cruise, and now hypersonic anti-ship missiles all aimed at being able to take out any adversary vessel that dares enter the entirety of the South China Sea, which China has claimed sovereignty over despite international law and the overlapping claims of some 12 other nations. So testing this weapon only say 12 to 1500 miles outside that area denial bubble certainly sends a message. But I do think it's important to point out that if this is true and the US intends to test Arrow out over the Pacific, that really does suggest a high degree of confidence in this weapon. Of course, I can't say that for sure. We know arrow has been tested at least twice since its alleged cancellation, but we don't actually know the outcomes of either of those tests. But if they went particularly well, it might make sense that the Air Force is now confident enough in this weapon to test it right out there in the open. Now, I can't say for sure what aircraft are currently at Anderson Air Force Base or elsewhere in the Pacific that may support this testing, but it would not shock me if a modified iteration of the RQ-4 Global Hawk was on site. Now, the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk is a high-altitude intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance drone, and Northrop Grumman is actively converting a slew of older Global Hawks into what they call range hawks. These aircraft are packed full of sensors dedicated specifically to support the testing of advanced weapon systems like Arrow. And that's a big deal because according to that same report, one of the successful tests of Arrow conducted over an active test range didn't produce any viable data because the range sensors went down. By using range hawks or other sensor-packed aircraft to assess the efficacy of these weapons over the open ocean, you can gather gobs of data about the hypersonic flight regime, the accuracy of the weapon, or the performance of its warhead without needing nearly as much infrastructure. Now, to be clear, I cannot say for certain that Arrow's about to be tested over the Pacific, but it's certainly going to happen somewhere sooner rather than later. The Air Force intends to make a decision about this weapon entering active service, before the close of this year.